Renowned for being a revolutionary leader and a brilliant tactician, Jel Akbar proved to be a pivotal figure during both the Clone Wars and the Galactic Civil War. Although he retired following the Rebel Alliance's victory over the Galactic Empire in the Battle of Jakku, General Leia Organa talked him out of retirement to defeat a new enemy, the First Order. Welcome to the Kangrizan Star Wars Lore Episode 118, The Life of Admiral Akbar. Jael Akbar was born on Moncala during the later years of the Galactic Republic. After enlisting into the Mon Calamari Guard, the body that protected Moncala's monarchs and dignitaries, Akbar worked his way through its ranks. He eventually became the Guard's captain, which also meant he became the chief military advisor of the Ocean World. When the Clone Wars came to Moncala, King Yos Kalina was assassinated by Separatist Rif Tamsin. However, to prevent the rightful heir, Prince Lee Char, from ascending to the throne, members of the Isolation League took credit for the crime to spark a civil war. As captain of the Moncala Knights, Jael became the protector of Lee Char. To help ease tensions on the planet, the Republic dispatched Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker and Senator Padme Amidala of Naboo to attend a meeting between the two sides. Unfortunately, the discussions went nowhere and only fueled the hatred between the Quadrants and Lee Char even more. Knowing a civil war was inevitable, Akbar contacted the Jedi Council for help. So that Mon Cala remained a Republic world, a company of clone scuba troopers led by Jedi Knight Kit Fisto were dispatched to the planet. Knowing that it was a long-standing tradition for the monarch of Mon Cala to lead the soldiers into battle, Akbar knew he had his work cut out protecting Lee Char. Shortly after Lee Char addressed his gather troops, the Quadrant attacked along with Separatist Aqua Droids, led by Tamsin. After Akbar proclaimed, It's an attack! He and Skywalker rallied their forces to defend the capital, Coral City, taking the Prince to the front lines. Jao then led the charge into the enemy ranks, ordering his troops to not let their homeworld fall into Separatist hands. When Akbar handed Lee Char a blaster and told him to earn the respect of his people, the young prince led the fight, which rallied his men. The gamble began to pay off when the droids and the quarren retreated. Though it was a victory, it was only the first assault. Akbar told everyone more was to come. However, massive cyborg hydroid medusas and other droids attacked the city not long after, killing many Mon Calamari. With no alternative, Lee Char and Akbar led a retreat to caves on the ocean floor. Whilst in retreat, Lee Char expressed how disappointed he felt over the battle to that point and that his father would have been so ashamed. However, Jael told him otherwise, stating Kalina would have been very proud. Whilst regrouping in the caves, the Jedi Council contacted the party in order to arrange the deployment of more Republic soldiers. However, the transmission signal was jammed before arrangements were made. Unsure if help was going to arrive or not, Lee Char and the party had to mount another attack. When everyone agreed to it, the plan was put into motion. When the group ascended back to the surface, a group of enemies stood in their way, meaning Kit Fisto had to divert their attention. Splitting into two groups, the Allies successfully disrupted the city's central planetary scanner mast, meaning Tamsin would be unaware of incoming Republic reinforcements. Unfortunately, he figured out exactly why the scanner mast was destroyed. Therefore, when a Venator-class Star Destroyer arrived with members of the Gungan Grand Army, the opposition were not caught off guard. Following the arrival of a Separatist Trident-class assault ship and a surge of opposition forces, the Republic-aligned troops were taken prisoner by the Separatists. Akbar, his troops and the clone soldiers were all taken to a prison camp on the ocean floor, while Skywalker, Amidala and Fisto were personally interrogated by Tamsin. Fortunately, Lee Char and Jedi Padawan Ahsoka Tano managed to avoid capture. To rid Mon Cala of Tamsin and the Separatist droids, the Prince sought to rally the Mon Calamari, Gungans, clones, Jedi and even the Quarrens together. With the guidance of Akbar, the two devised a plan to do such. The first step was to have Lee Char arrested. After willingly giving in to his captors, Tamsin sentenced Lee Char to death, ordering the prisoners be brought to the capital to witness it. The boldness of the prince worked. As Tamsin read aloud the prince's crimes against the Separatist state, the Quarren soldiers freed the prisoners and began distributing blasters to the clones and other troops. When it was time to attack, a diversion allowed Lee Char to be rescued. Leading his men, Akbar charged the Aquadroids. Mon Cala was officially freed when the prince killed Tamsin. 
Akbar attended Lee Char's coronation as the King of Mon Cala, during which the Quadrants pledged their allegiance to the new king, whilst Lee Char pledged his loyalty to all the people of Mon Cala. Though the new king officially ended the civil war by killing Tamsin, the victory would not have been possible without Akbar. Decades afterwards, following the Battle of Yavin, the Galactic Empire discovered the location of a rebel base inside one of the Masasi temples. In response, Akbar was one of the rebel leaders in charge of the evacuation. He helped organise the troops and gather supplies on the planet for such. Sometime afterwards, Akbar sent Luke Skywalker to Rhodia in hopes to open up supply lines for the rebellion. By the Battle of Endor, in which he was one of the rebels' commanders, Akbar was already an admiral in the Alliance's fleet. During a pre-mission briefing about the attack on the second Death Star, the Admiral explained how a ground team on Endor would take out the super weapon shield generators, whilst a fighter squadron led by Lando Calrissian would enter the Death Star and destroy it from within. Aboard the bridge of a ship, Home One, Akbar commanded his fleet. However, once battle commenced, he noticed the assault was a trap, and that the Empire were leading them to their demise. Though it was indeed a trap, and the Death Star super laser was operational, Calrissian convinced Yao to continue with the assault, but the tides of the battle changed when the ground troops managed to destroy the shield generator. As Calrissian led an attack on the Death Star's interior, Akbar's fleet held off the rest of the Imperial forces. The Admiral told his forces to especially focus fire on the Executor, which was ultimately destroyed. The Death Star's destruction spelled victory for the Rebels. Though the Empire suffered huge losses at the Battle of Endor, they continued to fight. Three months after the historic battle, the Alliance officially reorganised into a new Republic. As they continued to fight against Imperial forces, the Republic discovered a secret Imperial meeting on Akiva. When Wedge Antilles went missing after investigating the matter, Akbar headed a rescue mission for him. When scouts were killed trying to find the pilot, Jao prepared a small fleet. Once again, the Imperials were defeated. Afterwards, Akbar presented a medal to Nora Wexley for her part in rescuing Antilles. One year after the Battle of Endor, the Mon Calamari led Republic forces to the final victory over the Empire at Jakku. Not long after, he retired, closing the door on an incredible career which saw him play a huge part in restoring peace to the galaxy. However, nearly 29 years later, he was talked out of retirement by former rebel General Lear Organa to join the resistance. Just as he'd done throughout his illustrious career, Akbar's incredible tactical mind and leadership helped the resistance throughout their conflict with the First Order. Whilst on Dakar, he was pleased to hear pilot Poe Dameron had destroyed Starkiller Base, a superweapon far superior to both Death Stars. However, the First Order were not going to respond lightly, something Akbar had to prepare for. If you want to learn more about the Resistance and the role Akbar played in the group, click the link on screen or the one in the description. Now it's time for this week's question. Do you think Akbar will survive the new trilogy? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to vote for next week's episode by liking one of the three comments below. And for more Star Wars lore, keep blocks here. To the king, sir. Generally speaking, light whips functioned on the same principles and mechanics as lightsabers, consisting of a handle and an emitted coherent beam of energy. However, rather than having straight, metre-long blades, light whips featured long and flexible ones that often exceeded several metres in length. 